trace me new life did he give each of my heart does my savior now live his love and the trace me new life did he give each of my heart does my savior now live his love and the trace me new life did he give each of my heart does my savior now live his love and the trace me new life did he give come on he overcame for us. He laid down his life for us. Are we willing to lay down our lives for those that we love? I mean, he really laid it down. But are we going to quit the judgment and quit the unforgiveness and lay our lives down because it doesn't matter? What matters is to love and to forgive. Now, never love evil, never love sin. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The Spirit of God is saying this to the church, to the people of the church. Ezekiel 18. You know, I had to repent because... Jesus. Because of the people that were carrying a no Palestinian flag as a flag and saying, you know, kill all the Jews, and it's happening all over in America. What happened to the big hate crimes that are supposed to be stopped? But I told Jason, I said, you better drive fast because I'm gonna get out of this truck and I am gonna go over and I am gonna have supernatural power and I am gonna punch every single one of them in their face, in their stomach. I'm gonna kick them, and then I'll educate them. But first, I need to beat them up. I have to repent. They know not what they do. They're just plain stupid. There's two words, idiot and moron. Those are not swear words. They're realities. Look them up. But he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Ezekiel 18. Oh, what time is it, honey? Okay, well, I'm going long today. <laughs> I'm all right. Ezekiel 18, 21. But if the wicked man turns from all his sins which he has committed and observes all my statutes and practices justice and righteousness, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions which he has committed will not be remembered against him because of his righteousness which he has practiced, he will live. Do I have any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord God, rather than that he should turn from his ways and live? But when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and does according to all the abomination, abominations that a wicked man does, will he live? All, what's that word, BJ? All. All, all his righteous deeds which he has done will not be remembered. Remember Jesus saying, I never knew you? All his righteous deeds, which he has done, will not be remembered, and his treachery, which he has committed, and his sin, which he has committed, for them he will die. I'm telling you, people, we need to repent. Jesus is coming. He's coming, and we're not going to know the day and hour, and it's going to be unexpected, and all hell's going to break loose on this earth, and I want to be in heaven, not in all hell. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not right. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not right? Is it not your ways that are not right? And I'm saying house here, house of church. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity and dies because of it, for his iniquity which he has committed, he will die. Uh, you know, death is separation from God in the spiritual realm, never being with God again. Again, when a wicked man turns away from his wickedness, which he has committed and practices justice and righteousness, he will save his life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That should be every single one of us in here. But the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is not right. Are my ways not right, O house of Israel? Is it 
not your ways that are not right. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, each according to his conduct, declares the Lord God. Repent and turn away from all your transgressions so that iniquity may not become a stumbling block to you. And I believe the greatest iniquity in the church is unforgiveness. I really do. Because anything else we do, we can ask God to forgive and he will forgive if we're serious, but if we hold on to unforgiveness, he's serious. Cast away from you all your transgressions which you have committed and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Why will you die, O church of God, for hanging on to unforgiveness? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone who dies, declares the Lord. Therefore, repent and live. God does not want, want any to perish, but all people that he has created in his image to come to the knowledge and truth of him. Now, God who has been, and I don't understand all that, and I don't have to, but he's always been. He could have chose the evil way if he wanted to although I don't believe God could because of who he is, but he has chose the righteous way, the just way, and expects us to do the same. How pained must God be when kids are sex trafficked, when people are brutalized? Come on. How much must, much, must that hurt his heart? Yet he has opened up a door to forgiveness unless we don't forgive. Acts 2, 38 and 39. Peter said to them, repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And what is the Holy Spirit? He reminds me of all the things. He reminds us of all the things that Jesus has said, that God has said, that the word says, if we, if we know it, if we read it, if we meditate upon it. For the promises for you and your children and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. You just repent. Matthew 18, 21 and 22. And you know who's the hardest? Is your family. They're the hardest. It hurts the most, that's why. Get over it. They're just people. And don't say, well, I thought you were a Christian. Well, they could be a Christian, and you're walking in unforgiveness. So are you. Matthew 18, 21 and 22. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him up to seven times. I'll do it this many Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. And many times something happens and we unforgive. And then that person does something else or those people do something else. And we unforgive even worse. Not only did they do A, but they did B and C and D and E. We have to repent. Now, I want to say something. We cannot go to every person that has called, caused unforgiveness face to face because it wouldn't be appropriate. There's people that are evil that you need to stay away from that may have caused horrible things. Horrible things. But it doesn't matter. It's our heart God's looking at. It's not a dead work. It's not an action that is stupid to do that he would not tell you to do. Now, sometimes God will tell you to go to somebody. You know, we've heard a lot of testimonies about somebody getting killed and the person going to jail and the Christian going and saying, I, will, I choose to forgive you, though I don't like what you did. There's lots of stories about that that are true. God's concerned with our heart. And if it's been such a horrible, evil thing, or the person, I had to forgive my mom for things after she died. 
Because when she died, I was mad about some stuff. And we didn't have time to work it out. And how dare her die? We didn't have time to talk about these things. So I had to do it after. But that's okay. God's looking at our hearts, people. So don't feel bad if you can't go to that person or you just don't think it's a good idea. If you don't think it's a good idea, it's more than likely not a good idea. But if it's a brother or sister in the church that's just said something stupid to you or done something that's kind of stupid, you know, that's really not that big of a deal, don't begrudge yourself and them. And not just in our church, but believers, because we are people. We're all sinners. So I want to pray for some people. And I really want you to respond to this today, because when you come back next time, I don't want you carrying this anymore. And I know that the Lord has been bringing people up to you throughout this time, because I asked him to do that. So you don't have to sit there and go, uh, let's see. But I want to pray for those who need to receive the ability to forgive themselves by forgiving others. Sometimes you're not forgiving yourself simply because you've hung on to forgiveness against others. That's the first group. I want to pray. I want prayer for those who think they are okay, but there is unforgiveness that needs to be taken care of within your own heart. And I want prayer for those who have never received the forgiveness that the Lord Jesus gave by his action on the cross. It's always about the cross and what Jesus did for us. When he said it is finished and meant it for all who come to him, to live with him and him with us. So three groups, those who need to receive the ability to forgive themselves through the action of forgiving others. Those who think they're okay, but there's unforgiveness that needs to be taken care of within your heart. And those who have never really understood, you may have been going to church all your life, but you don't really know the forgiveness that God has for you. And I want you to receive it today. I'm not having anybody come forward. I'm not having anybody lay hands on you. I don't want anybody stand up. It's none of anybody's business. Father God, in the name that is above all names, Yeshua Messiah, Lord Jesus Christ. That's what you told me to do, to stand against everything that your word says that I could stand against or stand for with. I could say in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I ask that these people be loosed in their hearts for any of these things, whether they can't forgive themselves, which is just such a bunch of lies from the enemy, because they're holding unforgiveness in their heart towards somebody, help them to do that right now. And Father, it may take longer than just a few moments. There may be a whole bunch of, of people on that list. And I'm asking in the name of Yeshua Messiah that you continuously bring people to their heart, to their mind, if they need to continue as we step out of these walls. Lord Yeshua, I pray for those that just need to forgive others. Just need to forgive others so they don't end up in calamity. And Father, I pray for those who have never really known your complete love and your complete forgiveness that their sins, you don't even know what they are because you said you will remember them no more. Father, help each and every one of us. I don't want any of my 
friends, these beloved people, whether they're watching, whether they're sitting here, not make it. And for you to have to say to them, be gone, I never knew you, because they didn't forgive. Father, forgive me any time. Bring to it immediately to me that I need to forgive all my actions, all my attitudes, all my evil thoughts, even if I never speak it out of my mouth, that means it's in my heart. Please help me to quickly come to you and get the clean slate and to put on some praise and worship music or to put on the word or to just start worshiping you or praising you or to just declare that I'm forgiven because you have forgiven me for these things I have held on to that are so foolish to keep us from all that you have for us. Thank you, Abba. I know you're preparing us for things to come. I know you are. Bring these words up. If people need to watch the rebroadcast, have them watch it. Have them write the scriptures down. Have them speak your word, which nothing can stand against. Thank you for your love pouring forth on each and every person who is obedient today, Lord, a love they have never experienced from you before, but they can have it because they love by forgiving. It's the greatest love that we can show another because you show your love to us by forgiving us, and it cost us the life of you, Lord God, whom we all put on that cross. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Abba, that you have defeated the works of the enemy. That was one of the reasons you came, that we could use the name of Jesus and stand strong and declare the truth of your word. Bless these people abundantly, Lord. We love them so much, but I know we can't possibly love the way you do. So bless our friends. Bless them, bless them, bless them. Help them be the disciples you want them to be so they can disciple their children. They can disciple their co-workers. They can disciple their co-students, Lord. Thank you for opening up doors and conversations. Thank you for opportunities to just ask somebody if, if they share something, if you say, may I pray for you, and pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God bless you all. See you later. You alone, Lord, made me a brand new creation. It is only by your spirit could this have been done.